Good morning. Woo. <laughs> Hope everyone's doing great this morning. Why don't y'all stand with us and we'll begin our worship this morning. have a seat. Thank y'all being here this morning. Going to a couple of announcements real quick. Uh, you see a little schedule and things this week, but uh, I want to highlight a couple. This one is uh, I've already some of them been partying, so we've got some more parties this Friday and Saturday, so you notice that. Adult three and adult five. If you're not involved in a Sunday school class, join one. Join the party. Uh, so come, come, come be a part of that, and then you can be on there on Sunday morning. I'd be glad to have you and uh, it's all good. Don't forget next Sunday we'll have a special pro uh, drama pre presentation during the morning worship time. Are you glad to be here this morning? Yes, indeed. It's good to be here in this Christmas season and time of year. If you're a first-time guest, we'd love a record of your visit. Just fill out the card uh, in the back of the pew. Fill it, put in that little uh, box in the back after, as you leave. Let's stand together. Greet somebody this morning you hadn't seen this morning.
Hey, good morning, everybody. As you uh, make your way back to your seats, I'm going to go ahead and pray. <laughs> yeah. It's not on? Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's pray. <laughs> Dear Lord, uh, we are so glad to be here, Lord, uh, today to worship you, Father. Father, I pray, Lord, as uh, we uh, begin this Christmas season, Lord, that we would never forget, Lord, the real reason for the season, Lord, is you, Lord. Father, uh, Father, we do thank you, Lord, for all that you do for us, Lord. You do so much for us, Lord, and we never want to take that for granted, Lord. Father, I pray for Brother Eric, Lord, as he brings us a message this morning, Lord. Just open our hearts, Lord, to receive it, Lord, and to use it to honor you and all that we do, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails me. All my days I've been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. For us 
spoke a word, you were singing over me. You have been so, so good to me. Before I took a breath, you breathed your life in me. so, so kind to me. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. Oh, it chases me down, fights till I'm found, leaves the ninety-nine. I couldn't earn it, I don't deserve
we thank you for your love. We thank you for this time of year that we get to celebrate your birth. We thank you for our opportunity to worship you. We love you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. You may have a seat.
Thank you, Miss Sarah, and my little buddy Liam. Great job. Well, I got to tell you, the part Christmas party and starts early around here. My plan was to get through Thanksgiving, lose a few pounds, then get ready for Christmas parties. Everything's feeling a little snug, so if I run out of breath, just let me catch my breath and I'll come back too, all right? If I pass out cold, just somebody get me some cold water and I'll be right back with you. Anyway, we do have a lot of parties and I hope everyone's planning to attend one. Even if you're not a member of a class, go make yourself feel at home. I'm always open door and all the food we've eaten so far has been tremendous. Uh, thank you for the time and effort that our ladies and gentlemen have put into that. And here we go. Now, next Sunday morning, special treat this afternoon. If you're involved in the, the drama skit, um, we have practice, right? A little rehearsal. We'll have lunch for you and your families over in the Family Life Center. Then we'll transition over here to, for a short practice. This morning, we're going to look at J Jesus's mother, Mary. So I'm going to ask you if you would take your Bibles and turn to the first chapter and verse 26. You know, it didn't rain for 14 years. And then, wow, uh, when it rains here, it rains. And uh, I'm not accustomed to mosquitoes in December. There's a bunch of them. Just a warning from your pastor, don't go outside. Not after dark. There's nothing good awaits for you out there. Uh, but I hope everyone's getting the Christmas shopping done. Men, think, think ahead, order ahead, whatever you need to do, but don't get behind. Walmart's starting to get a little crazy, so pray before you go in there. Well, this is an interesting little insight and to his mother, and there's several things for us to, to look at here. All right, I'm going to correct this before I get any farther. Could you tell me what time it is? If I do my math right, that's nine minutes fast. So I got to 12.45. All right, chapter 1, verse 26. I know you just sat down, but if you're... Y'all need to start listening. I said, if you have your Bible, turn into the book of Luke in chapter 1. If you think you're going to win this, you're wrong. Just because it's recorded doesn't mean anything. <laughs> Let's go to Luke uh, chapter 1, <laughs> verse 26, if you want to be that particular. <laughs> if you would stand up. Folks, I'm in a food coma like I've never been in my life. Oxygen deprived. Anyway, here we go. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent to God by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man named Joseph of the house and the lineage of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came to her and said, Greetings, favored woman. The Lord is with you. But she was deeply troubled by this statement, wondering what kind of greeting this could be. Then the angel of the Lord told her, Don't be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Now listen, you will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of God the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom will have no end. Mary asked the angel, well, how can this be, since I have not been with a man, not had sexual relations? And the angel replied to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. And consider your relative Elizabeth. Even she has conceived a son in her old age, and this is the sixth month for her, who was called childless, for nothing will be impossible with God. And her reply is, I am the Lord's servant. May it be done to me according to your word. And then the angel left. Lord, we love you and we thank you for the beauty of this morning. We thank you for the rain and 
the way you sustain the beauty and the order of your creation by your sovereign, merciful, gracious hand. Lord, I pray that in our hearts we would have a desire to find favor in your sight. That we would take this true story of Jesus' mother and see the insights, not to worship and honor her. Lord, that we may see your power and the splendor that she knew and understood and responded with such a sacrificial level of faithfulness. Lord, we thank you again for this day, for the season and the opportunity that we have every day to celebrate the birth, the life, the death, the resurrection, and the kingship of our Lord Jesus Christ. To this end, Lord, may this church bring glory and honor to your name. May we lift your name up so that you may draw men and women, boys and girls, unto yourself. And it is in that name we pray, the Lion of Judah, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Amen. You can be seated, friend. Well, it's estimated that Mary was between 13 and 16 when she received the, this news. Um, Again, just a different world, a different culture, but you can ima imagine her rationale. So my questions when I read this little excerpt is, Lord, why did you favor her? What does favor mean? And of course, how does this story, when I say story, how does this life, true life setting, what played out in the life of Mary, you chose for it to be right here so what does it say to the reader in the context it was written? And then how do those truths surpass time into the application, the understanding of my life today? God's word is alive, sharper than any two-edged sword. So I pray that its words are not just words on a page, but become the truth that we live by, the hope that we long for. And so let's walk through this passage and then I want to come back and go through three points before we leave. Did anybody smell them chicken biscuits this morning? Ooh, son. Just keeping you awake. In the sixth month, if anybody's blood sugar does drop out, I got candy in the office. So just go ahead and see yourself right at the office and I'll wait for you to get back. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent to God to town in Galilee, called Nazareth to a virgin, engaged to a man, we talked about him last week, named Joseph of the house of David. He makes a point to point out the lineage of David, of Joseph, the same thing he did last week in the, the pretext to the story we looked at, to a virgin named Mary. And the angel came to her and said, Greetings, favored woman. So this is not a gender issue here as to where God's favor rests. God's favor throughout the context of Scripture, when it speaks of this type of favor, is often unrelated to merit, but defined by God's grace, mercy, goodness, and love. And when we say, when the Scripture says, and we need to, to grasp the nature of God, who God is, we say God loves you. Well, Scripture tells us that God is love. So God just doesn't make a choice, a decision consciously to love His creation, to love His people. God is love. Does that make sense? So if I choose to love someone then it's here and there but if i am love then there's nothing or no one i've ever created that i do not have compassion and passion for does that make sense so god is god doesn't choose to love god is love god doesn't choose to be peaceful god is peace god is strength he is power. It's not a decision He makes. It's the nature of His being. The nature of His existence. So it is not, God cannot choose to not love. And we think of judgment as not love. No, justice is an aspect of love. So God's nature is completely consistent in His being. So when He says Highly favored or favored woman. What does that mean? 
It means that God sought Mary out before the foundation of the world, not according to anything good or bad that she had done. Now it says that she was a virgin, which entitles us to believe to some capacity she had faith. She was living a pure life. She had a passion and a desire for righteousness. In the account of Joseph, it said that he was a righteous man. In the account of Mary, it said that she was favored. I'm not taking away from any righteous attempt on her part, but what do we know of favor? If favor is granted beyond your ability to be righteous, it is favor God finds love and compassion, preference that he finds toward you. And so you may ask, how do I find favor with him? Well, there's a favor that was already given to you as his child. Does that make sense? So you already have favor because God sent his only that. Should not perish, but have everlasting life. So friend, you already have favor. And you're going to find at the end of the text how to continue in that favor. So when the, the angel appeared to Mary, now let's put ourselves in the mind of a 13 to 16 year old young lady referred to as a woman. So there was a virtue, there was a maturity. Scripture does not lie. This is when they normally got married or betrothed between 13 and 16. And so he says, Greetings, favored woman, the Lord is with you. And she says, Say what? <laughs> right? I mean, what she asked herself, this kind of a, what is this, what is this greeting all about? You know, when the kids come up, I'm not comparing my kids to the angel Gabriel, when my kids come up and say, Dad, you look really really nice today house looks great dad you're an awesome dad my next question is normally what do you want so this is the first time i'm certain we don't have any biblical record of it that the angel gabriel came to miss mary and said hey mary you're highly favored now whenever you hear hey you're highly favored you would assume uh-oh that means something if i'm highly favored and that's not being said to everyone. Now, everyone's favorite. Everyone has God's love. But highly, I'm being a set apart. Set apart for what? So, and God sent an angel? This is not normal protocol. So Mary finds some degree of alarm. Now you tell me. I'll tell you. If I was asleep with my CPAP on. Just snoring away the night. God, those things are miserable. It's like human torture. And they tell you it's for your benefit. If I'm going, and I wake up and there's an angel at the end of the bed, it's going to be a little alarming, right? I've got shotguns hid everywhere for those specific situations. And so she sees the angel and it is concerning because this is out of the ordinary. Now, anytime God reveals himself in such a clear way, it is highly out of the ordinary. Let me remind you that you have a revelation that is highly out of the ordinary. And so Mary's sitting there and she immediately, just like any one of us would have done, oh my goodness, what's going on? What's he going to ask for? Because you know when God appears, whether it's his personal appearance or whether it's an angel, it puts you in a place where you're going to have to respond, right? Remember back in the day we used to break up with folks? How'd we do it? Church welcome cards. Right? You write a little note. Hey, it's me. I used to like you. <laughs> but I found somebody else. 
and then XL, XL, right? Then you'd fold it up, and you'd leave. Well, that, that communication has no kind of burden or response requirement. But when you talk to someone in person, it's a different situation, isn't it? So Mary had the Old Testament. She appears in the first of the new. So she knew of God, had read, familiar with what he had written, but never spoke to him or a representative. And so again, the situa situation for her is extremely escalated. And she says, what, what is this all about? What favor? You're telling me I found favor. What am I supposed to do with this favor? How did I get this favor? Well, again, Mary was just a faithful young lady preserving herself for her husband. And we need to recognize how important that is in God's word. That moms and dads, grandmas and grandpas help protect your children and your grandchildren's purity. What's their choice? Yes, it's their choice, but it's your call to help protect. We're not helping protect when we turn them loose at night on computers and cable television. Does everyone understand that? You're not turning them, helping them when you let them to go to their bedroom all alone. Come on, you were young once too, right? Yeah, I see you smiling. And God remember, he remembers, he was watching. It's not my problem, it's yours. And the angel came to her and said, greetings. And, and she started wondering, what, kind, what is this? And the angel noticed she was afraid. I said, Mary, don't be afraid. A requirement from the Lord is not something to fear. It's something to respond to. And so Mary says, well, he says, talks about who, who Jesus will be. And then how he will be honored who he is. And then Mary asks, yeah, okay, I got you here. You see, Gabriel, do you realize there's not been a virgin birth before this point in all of humanity? So, got you. Let me explain something to you, Gabriel. Have a seat. It sounds all well and good that, that the Lord wants me to do something, but there's just this one problem. Don't mean to call you dummy, but you're missing a big portion of this. I've never been with a man, Gabriel. So how am I supposed to accomplish that which God has asked me to accomplish when I'm not equipped? You see? You have a revelation with a requirement. And then you have a response. And our response is often, Lord, that all sounds well and good. <sighs> you know, I've been thinking about it, Lord. And as much as I'd like to be faithful, there's just this one piece missing. Gabriel, I, this kind of bothered me at first, but now it really doesn't even relate to me. Because... Never been with a man, so that baby's going to be a bit of a problem. You see, you can come up with a thousand different reasons to get out of God's commands. And I would argue that in all of Scripture, Mary had the best response that had ever been given to excuse herself from responding to God's request. You want me to have a baby? Well, Gabriel, we don't both know where babies come from. And that's not possible. So, wrong house. Now, why do you think Elizabeth and Mary had been close? God was already teaching Mary through someone else that God can accomplish the impossible. God's sovereignty, His hand in creation, over creation, under creation, is at work at all times. You're being prepared, equipped, and educated constantly to fulfill your call from the Most High. And so Mary says, well, buddy, I don't think so. And then he says, oh, Mary, that's no big deal. 
See, us as Baptists, we forget something. The Holy Spirit's got power. And when he shows up, the situation changes. Well, no, 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 Mary, listen. You sit down. Don't say that to your wives, gentlemen. Uh, you, just, you just stay seated. The angel replied to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, when this happens, the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Because there is no man married. Do you understand? That's the point. God calls us at a specific time for a specific purpose in a specific situation for a specific reason. And it's always for His glory and not ours. Now Mary, if you're Mary, okay, now, whoa. The Holy Spirit's going to come on me and who's going to know this? Gabriel, how many people you talk to? Well, my request, given the culture, we discussed it last week, would be, could you go tell the church? Because I'm going to have to answer some questions. So, Gabriel, could you just pop in a couple of Sunday school classes, barbershop, beauty shop, nail salon, Walmart, just let some folks know, it's mom, dad, grandma, grandpa? Because... If I'm going to be pregnant, folks is going to notice and then I could be killed for it. How am I going to explain this to Joseph? He's just a good old boy. We saw that last week. He ain't going to believe this. So, this is a little bit bigger than what I understood at first. Because I was listening to you, but I wasn't getting it because... I knew in the back of my mind I was a virgin. But now you're telling me things that are fulfilling prophecy, and I believe your word. And so this is real. What are the implications? What are the complications? What are the potential disciplinary actions that are going to be carried out on me? This is for real. And he says, Yeah, I know it, girl. You remember Elizabeth? We've already taken care of miraculous birth around here. We've got this down pat. Your situation is not that big of a deal for the Holy Spirit. Did you catch that? Your situation. I don't care how gargantuous. Is that a word, Jeanette? It's not gargantuous. It's big. That's what that means. No matter how big it is in your mind... The Holy Spirit's got it. So, let's continue. So, Mary, don't worry about this. The Creator, Sustainer. The one who created the universe. Now, we often think that He created the earth. No. Everything that is substance had to be created. Ex nihilio means out of nothing. God did not take some dirt from Pluto that apparently doesn't exist anymore and make the earth. Everything was out of nothing. And that's not the earth. That is the whole of universes. Plural. And so remember, Mary, who you're talking to and what he's capable of. And then what's Mary's response? Well, she says, I'm the Lord's servant. May it, be done, may it be done to me according to your word. And then the angel left. And so where do we go with a story like that? First, I'd say, how do I have to find favor? Knowing that, that God has favored us as his children... He's favored all of creation and his involvement in sustaining and providing, even for the sparrow. But where do I go with this favor and what does that favor imply to me? Well, that favor is as if the spirit of the living God revealed himself to me and said something. Do you know what? That's what this is. The revelation. And said, Eric, I favored you. 
And I have given you my son. You catching the parallel here? I have favored you. You're a believer. You're a Christian. Meaning you are a follower. You have the Spirit, the Holy Spirit inside of you. And I made that possible. It said it was a work of the Holy Spirit, right? Well, so are you. And so the Holy Spirit appears to you at the point of your salvation and says, Hey, brother, hey, sister. Hey, Eric, you are favored. The Lord has given you something. And you need to consider that my response is, Oh, but I'm nothing but a wretched sinner. He says, No. You are favored. When Jesus, right, we, we've heard and said and sung, when Jesus was on the cross, you were on his mind. I'd say that was favored, wouldn't you? And so the revelation, the Holy Spirit appears and he says, Believer, you're favored. And then in my response and my sin and my constant drawing in the flesh back to the scripture says the vomit of filth. It is a continued process just like Mary. Lord, there's just one issue. I'm still struggling with liking sin. I still like the nature of the the old man. He says, oh, no, no. Favor, Eric, you can't undo that. You're a Christian now. There's more expected of you. Favor is where it started. Faithfulness is where we finish. So Mary says, how how do I go from favor to carrying the Holy Spirit, the child of the Holy Spirit, carrying Jesus Christ And being known in that way. How am I supposed to go out and be recognized as the mother of Jesus Christ? How am I? How are you supposed to go out and live in a way that when people see us, they recognize that we carry the presence and the person of the Holy Spirit? They say, I and you, as a believer, are favored. And I've came up with a thousand excuses to justify the sin that I love so much. Now, you know one thing that I love more than anything? Freedom, America. I love my freedom. Think about Mary. Freedom. I've never been a mother. But I've walked with one, I have lived with one in freedom. I mean, she couldn't even find privacy to go to the bathroom, right? Them kids are clawing at that door like a couple wild animals. There's no freedom. But I love the idea that I get to make choices. And that's the greatest idolatry in Christendom. My choices. Guys, I'm not not a Satan worshiper. I'm a me worshiper. And Mary, 13 to 16, I'm sure she had had some conversations. They didn't have public school like we know public school. In seventh grade, she knew something, right? They were preparing her to be married. But still, you got an excuse and you can come up with the best one and it's not going to beat this one. So finding favor, you've already found it. And so I'd tell you in response to that, consider this. You can't shake God's love. You can't sin enough to where He doesn't love you. You can't do anything where He doesn't want that relationship back with you. You know, in disciplining my children... And we, we used to spank. Now we've we found through starving it's more effective. <laughs> um, but 
I, w- I would discourage anything longer than a week. The doctor, <laughs> doctor starts noticing and state gets involved. It's complicated. But you know, when I discipline the kids, it- it's to correct them, right? But do you know what my biggest fear is? They'll get mad at me and not love me, not come back to me, go hide and think they need to hide from me. You know, that's, we're built to expect someone to abandon us. And friend, God's not going to abandon you. It don't matter what you've done. There's nothing possible for, you, for him to ever abandon. Let's look next. Well, she figured out she found favor, that God loved her. And next, she had to find faith. Now you can believe God loves you. But that doesn't mean you found faith. Friend, the scripture says the demons believe in him and shudder. But I wouldn't say they've got faith. She had a question to ask, didn't she? She had an excuse to offer. Hey, Gabriel, I'm glad I got favor. But let me tell you the biggest problem here is that I'm not a person you can use because I'm not qualified. And I don't know if you're capable of putting me or bringing me into a situation where I'm qualified or capable. Because my life does not qualify me for this specific situation. Well, so Gabriel gave her an explanation. You have one too. Gabriel says, girl, if you think for one little bitty itty second, I think it's a little bitty itty bitty second, that you have said anything that God is not capable of correcting, let me remind you of Elizabeth. So if you've got any excuse as to why God is not big enough or capable enough, let me remind you of a story. It involves a young lady named Mary. And friend, he is capable to do far and above exceedingly anything we could ask or expect. Well, she found favor and that favor led her to faith. Right? We're saved and that requires faith. But friend, faith is to be lived out in what we call faithfulness. And let's look at verse 38. In verse 38, she says, Well, Gabriel, I presented the issue, and all of our issue was sin. We were separated from the love of God, and and then there was a child born. I was incapable of a relationship with the King of Kings, the Most Holy. And then Jesus fixed it. Gabriel reminds Mary that, no, we can fix this. And then Mary, having faith, determines to be faithful. She says, take me. I'm yours. It doesn't matter what what will befall me. It doesn't matter what it will cost me. It doesn't matter if I, because Gabriel never here assured her of anything being easy. He just said, you're going to carry Jesus Christ. We got it. And she said, let it be done to me as you say. Where are you with what he said? Where am I? Most of the time, I'm still trying to come up with some excuses of why I can't or he shouldn't. You see, favor erases that. You're his child. Let me, the closest I can do with that is this crew, I like you too, Zephan, all right, buddy? All right, we're cool. But this crew up here in the front row, I got favor for. And let me tell you, you're not going to take that favor away. And neither are they. So, friend, 
I would encourage you. You've been favored. If you have trouble believing, it's because you're living ignorant. Get your questions answered. They're right here. But walk in the presence of the Most High. Live faithful. Choose to be obedient. And catch this. Your call is the same as Mary's to bring Jesus Christ to the world. Isn't it? They're so, you, when you read this story, at one, first you're like, what's that got to do with me? And then you read it and you realize it's got everything to do with me. I've got excuses and the world is lost and without hope. My call is to bring the name of Jesus Christ into the world that's lost and without hope. Lord, we love you and we thank you for the opportunity we have together this morning. And I thank you for a young lady by the name of Mary. Or her response, so logical. It made perfect sense. Lord, most of our excuses are often logical. But Lord, logic, while you created the mind in the the basics for logic, Lord, logic and faith sometimes, I'd say they don't coexist until we've learned your word. A human mind that has not been enlightened by the miraculous power of the Almighty cannot fathom your ability. But a mind and a heart that's been illuminated by the Word. Lord, Your Word says that You sustain everything by Your Word. The planets rotate on an axis or they follow the center of gravity, the pull of gravity, the laws of physics. Lord, that's a science. That, that's you. And so as we contemplate where we are and where we're going, may we navigate, not by the stars, but by the sun. And Lord, you favored us. May we find faith. May we live faithful. And it is in the name of the child king, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. As we close, I'm going to ask you to join me by standing. and We're not going to have a long invitation. I believe when the king of kings is, is leading you, a man ought to respond without hesitation or reservation, though you may have a question. So whatever is keeping you from living a life of faithfulness, I tell you as a man or a woman, go and ask your question to him. Get it off your heart. Whatever your excuse is, trust Him with it. His shoulders are big enough to carry your doubt. His shoulders are big enough. His hands of blood enough to carry your sin. So I'm going to go over and take my place here in the front little row. And if you would like me to pray with you, I'd love to. But friend, you need Jesus, not a preacher. If you've never accepted Christ, I'd love to pray with you. I'd love to meet with you this week. If you've never followed in baptism, please let me know so we can get that scheduled. Whatever it is you and the Lord need to do, friend, you do it there in the pew or you do it here at the altar. But there is no excuse for not following and surrendering to the call in your life. Lord Jesus, move among yours. Show them your favor and show them love. Amen.
but to trust in.